Okay, this is the last time I'm doing this introduction. It gets a little harder once you haven't done videos for a long time, but... Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Rodriguez. I am a third year medical student now and I make videos about my medical school experience and uh, all different kinds of stuff related to medical school so if you're interested in this journey and learning more about what it's like to be a medical student make sure to subscribe and leave me video ideas down below so that I can make further videos in the future um, but for today I am excited to talk about this because I wanted to make this video for a long time just kind of giving um, my opinion on um, going to class in person versus just doing online school for medical school and this is coming from a medical student that started during the pandemic so we started our first semester completely online and I didn't like it at all I mean I enjoyed it, like learning and just being introduced to this concept but I wished I would have started in person and I'm gonna share with you guys why I feel this is so important like mind me this is the the minority opinion I felt like I was going against the current with all of my classmates for the last two years um, I just wanted to talk this specifically because I feel like that's the direction where it's going I, it's going towards more online lectures because the majority of people think like that but at the same time I feel like it would be a misfortune for future students to not have these and to not have the in-person experiences especially for lectures and I just wanted to share why I think this way so if you're interested just keep watching So first I just wanted to start by going through the pros and cons of online lectures. I understand the hype. I understand the hype. I understand that you can just get up from your bed, go to your table and start already watching lectures and it's just more efficient that way in terms of timing and all of that. But I mean, look at it this way. You are spending time to get ready in the morning, building a morning routine getting ready like fixing your things getting your your lunch ready getting your breakfast having a proper breakfast instead of just running you know waking up at the last minute and just going to your desk and looking at a screen for the rest of the day that's what i feel like it's not worth it and i think it's worth going in person and building a routine because routines in life are important some people say it's boring and whatever but if you are a medical student and you're gonna be a student for the rest of your life you're gonna have a structure somehow for the rest of your life if you're gonna have a schedule or whatever in a hospital or you have things that you have to get done it's gonna always have to involve some kind of habit some kind of routine or structure so actually being there at 8 a.m even though it may sound like oh such a, uh, a pain waking up and like getting ready but that forced me and I'm telling you from my experience right now that I am in outpatient and I have a lot of more time free I can wake up uh, you know later in the in the morning unless I have other pre the preceptors but like most days I can wake up later and it's been hard for me you know to force myself to work instead of just having that obligation not obligation because it's, it's not mandatory in my school like I said like I went because I wanted but um, having that in my mind that I need to be there at 8am ready to learn I started early on especially if you're a morning person which I feel like it's most of us but maybe 50-60% of us are morning people um, getting ready being there starting to you know move your brain in some sort at 8 a.m you're already training your brain to be alert by that time your circadian rhythm is going to establish those hours and you're gonna be tired in the night so it's gonna be easier for you to go to sleep in the night um if you waking up early and um, had a full productive day but yeah, I understand the hype of online lectures. I understand that it's easier. I understand you can go back. But in reality, with my experience with online lectures, it is 100% less likely that you're going to pay attention. It's more likely that you're going to say, oh, I can go back to this in, at a later time. I could 
you know, be doing other things and you're not fully engaged because you don't have eyes on you. Nobody's looking at you because you probably have the camera off or whatever. So you could be just on your phone texting and like, if you're not putting your 100% attention in whatever you're being taught, you're only gonna gain like 15% of what they're, whatever they're saying to you. Um, so when I'm in person, I try to pay attention as much as I can because I have someone that is taking their time, that is present there with me, that woke up early to teach me. And most of the, um, of the professors are actually doctors that are volunteering their time to teach us. So I really appreciate that and that makes me pay attention more. Also, another thing, getting two hours of lectures, in my school is two hours, I don't know about the rest, I feel like three hours or four hours of lectures will be a little bit of too much, but two hours is not a big deal in my opinion. I feel like if you train your brain to pay attention for two hours, you're building attention span for the future and you get a break in between those two hours, so it's not like full two hours of paying attention, but paying attention for 15 minutes, you take a break and then paying attention for another 15 minutes, you're building that attention span that is going to affect you positively for your future because you're going to be going to lectures for the rest of your life. If you're um, a medical professional, there's there's CME lectures in the future, you know, there's conferences that, you, that we need to attend and those are long. Trying to be like a sponge, training your brain to be like a sponge and even if you don't serve 100%, you're gonna serve 80%, 70%, but you have already made that time worthwhile, right? Um, another thing, at home, yes, you can pause the lecture and then write down whatever you have. You know, it's more um, efficient in, in, them, in terms of taking notes, I guess, or like writing on top of your um, lectures or PowerPoints, yes. But at the same time, you're wasting more time per lecture. So in person, it's one hour no matter what. They're not like stopping for you to write down something. Whereas at home, you can stop it and then you end up taking two hours per one hour lecture instead of covering what you need to cover in two hours. I'm not saying that you're not gonna go back to the PowerPoints. You're gonna go back to it regardless. But I feel like the more passes you do in, in medical school of each content material, the more you're gonna learn. So that's your first pass already. And it could be your second pass if you're coming prepared. Of course, it's better if you're coming with a little bit of background information from before. And you're coming to this lecture with a little bit of, of understanding. Now you can even you know, ask questions and be more engaged, more, more is gonna stick. So that's gonna be your second pass already. After lectures, at least for my school, my curriculum, we go to small groups. And more schools are uh, transitioning to this method now where they do um, the small group activities, which is with other classmates and they're discussing cases, it's like PBL and all of that that I've talked to you guys about. All of that, um, it's mandatory. So if you go to the small groups, after the morning classes with already some background you already know i hate when i'm not prepared and i don't know nothing about these cases and then i'm just wasting my time there whereas if i know a little bit about it it's gonna be a better discussion right even if it's the first time that we're reading the case because we usually read the case and then the second time we see each other for that case is where we're really going to share all of the details but if the first time that you're going to see that case you're already coming with some material behind from the lectures that you went in the morning you know i i, I think you get me it's gonna be easier for you to um, learn from your classmates and teach each other and that's the best way of learning in my opinion another thing even though um these professors are specialists in their field Yes, some of them are not gonna be giving the best of the best lectures, but I feel like for the majority of my classes, they were, um, they were very organized. Some of them uh, like contain too much information, which could be hard to you know grasp which one is the most important to learn. But as you continue going to lecture, it's like a like a you're learning how to um, downgrade information to what you need or what's most important by going through all of these lectures. Of course, at the beginning, you're gonna say, oh my God, this is too much. Oh, 90 slides per hour, I can't deal with it. But then you, you learn to narrow it. You learn to highlight which ones are the most important based on whatever they're telling you. And now when you're reviewing these lectures 
after in at home you're not gonna focus on the slides that are less important you're gonna focus on the ones that are highlighted by you that went there and took notes plus they're all they're always gonna tell you a little bit of more details that are not scheduled learning points um, or learning outcomes per se but these are things that they're teaching from their experience which I think is very valuable sometimes during these lectures because they're working they're specialized in that material that they're teaching they tell you how it is like what are they actually using to treat these diseases what can we actually do re um, regardless of what the literature said you know I think it's important to know what happens really in the clinic from early on um, so that's why I really enjoyed to go there each of them are specialists for that material so you can ask deeper you know, and even if I'm not gonna remember all of these details, but I have a note, if if I ask the question, it's more likely to stick than if I just watched a recording that um, may have included just the main points, you know what I mean? And after the lecture even, I, I will stay sometimes. I got some shadowing opportunities from that with some of the doctors that taught us. I asked them, oh, can I go to your clinic? And they were able to, you know, um, accommodate me there so that is one of the main benefits in my opinion um, you know connecting with those clinicians that are really in the workforce and that are really struggling with you know with the social determinants of health and all of that and how do they manage that so yes you're getting the clinical pearls like I call them the clinical pearls are really important and I always add it to my notes if I already reviewed something and I already have notes for something I add on to those notes if a doctor tells me something specific so then my notes will be like very specialized <laughs> and very unique to me and to my learning style um, another thing the outside resources I know I've shared with you guys a lot of outside resources that not a lot but the main ones that I feel like are the most important for example to study for the USMLE step one which is another way different thing you're not in first and second year you may think you, you're studying for step one, but I recommend you to study for life, study for your patients, study for your profession, because that way you're gonna enjoy it more and it's gonna stick more. Now, right now, I'm still remembering things from the first and two years that are very relevant to clinical practice and that, um, you know, that are not specifically high yield or whatever, but are really important for me to know as a future doctor. So yes, learn because you love medicine. Don't learn just because of the step one. I share the resources for the step one because when you're getting closer to it, it is important to do good in the exam, right? The exam is clinically relevant in some points, clinic not relevant in other points, but yes, you have to do good on them. Yes, we have to pass the boards, but that is just one test what about the rest of your life the future if you you want to have notes and you want to have knowledge that you've gathered throughout years because that's that is why the medical education is so long because we build on it and we go back to the same topics and add on top of them and learn more and more medicines are coming so you kind of have to uh, build your foundation during those first two years and build a really good one so that then you can um, you know add on top of that and it's easier for you to learn later. Yes, so I wanted to um, touch on learning easier. Yes, by going to online lectures or whatever you're quote-unquote saving time but you're making yourself go through material in an easier way. So yes, you're saving time to do your fun things, mental health, whatever. But I also, I felt like I've shared with you guys that I've kept a good work-life balance even after going through lecture. It's only two hours out of your day, Monday to Friday. And those are going to be like the start of your day, making your day productive. So I'm not saying go to every lecture. <laughs> even though I went to every lecture but you could go to, I don't know, 70% of your lectures the ones that you feel are gonna be the most valuable to you but please don't say or oh, take away all the in-person lectures because people like me or other people that are coming in the future may really benefit from this and I just want you to know easier learning is sometimes it's not the best way of learning the harder you make it, like the, the more you struggle through the learning process the more likely you're going to remember those facts 
the more you have to review some material the more you have to investigate and and kind of work for it the more you're going to learn i feel like and yes your procrastination is a real thing you're 100 percent more likely to leave it for later and and then be stressed at the end when you're closer to the test if you don't do it right there and then so that's why at least getting the first pass or the second pass that day that you're scheduled will be better for you at the end of the day and by the last week before the exam you have already covered all of that you have already seen at least once all of that material so it's less stress i feel like when you're preparing for exams so yeah, that's it for, <laughs> for this video. I know it's long and I know I, I'm really passionate about this. So I wanted to share really why I feel like they should never take away in-person lectures. Please don't. Please don't say to your faculty to take it away. Um, because it's just very valuable in my opinion. It, it builds attention span. It builds habits. Um, the, you know, it, it teaches you to... A build a routine in your life helps you connect with doctors and you know, helps you prepare for the other activities that you have in your curriculum so yeah this is everything for this video i hope you have a good rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one